thank God for the privilege of another day. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because, Lord, you are giving us another wonderful day. I pray today, Lord, as we share your word, let your word profit our souls. In the name of Jesus, amen. Again, we are in episode 29 today. We are still looking at his promises to the faithful. And today we are looking at part number uh, part three. Uh, as we considered Psalm number 91, we are still looking at from verse 14 through 16. Of the promises that have been made mention of here, now we have looked at, I will deliver him, I will set him on high, and I will answer him. So today we want to look at two. We are looking at number four, I will be with him in trouble. And we will then consider, I will deliver him or I will honor him. So this uh, four we are uh, two, we want to consider today. I will be with him in trouble. Naturally, the time of trouble is a time when everybody always needs someone to be there for him or to be there with him. Time of trouble is very, very serious and you need somebody to be there for you or with you, especially when someone is in such troubles as prolonged sickness. He needs somebody around him. Unexplainable frustrations. Widows need people. Orphans need people. Aged singles that are waiting endlessly for life partner, especially a lady needs not somebody to be there for her. Okay, old parents that are bereaved of their only one child. It's a serious, terrible situation, a problem, a trouble indeed. Or when there is a sudden loss that costs one's long life or lifelong investment. It's a serious problem. All this period, they need a companion. A companion to be with them as such situation. And it is not only painful. But very deadly when someone is in trouble and no one is present to help is always very, very deadly. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 26, God called it a very bitter experience. Can I read now? And you can see it. Say, For the Lord saw the affliction of Israel, which was very bitter. Why was it very bitter? For there was neither born nor free nor was there any helper for Israel. It was tagged to be very bitter because there was no helper for Israel. And when no one to help in the time of trouble, the Bible tells us or make us to understand that the enemies will mock. Lamentation chapter 1 verse 7. In the days of her affliction and homelessness, Jerusalem remembers all her precious things that were from the days of old. When her people fell into the hand of the adversary, can you hear that? When they fell into the hand of the adversary and no one helped her, the adversary saw her and they mocked at her ruin. It shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So it is very serious. When nobody to help you, nobody is there for you in the time of trouble, even the enemies will mock you. And Job discovered the pains of no one in the time of trouble and he cried out in job chapter 6 verse 13 he said is it that my help is not within me it's very painful is it that my help is not within me and that deliverance is driven from me oh job established a powerful point here he said when your help is not available deliverance will be driven away from you or far away from you when there is no help around you, when there is nobody with you in trouble, deliverance also will be far from you. I pray in the name of Jesus as many that are passing this situation and they look right, left and center and there is nobody to arise to help you. Heaven will arise and help you. Help will arise for you. God who promised to be with you in trouble will definitely move into your situation and deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. So the truth is this, God is the true helper in the time of trouble. I want to say this and I want you to take note of it very carefully. If God is not with you in trouble, 
then you are in a serious trouble. Note that. I will repeat it again. If God is not with you in, in your trouble, then you are in a very serious trouble. Note that. The king of Samaria says that. If the Lord does not help you, from where shall I help you? If God doesn't help you, even vain is the help of men. The help of men will put you into more problems. So that is why you need God to be with you in your trouble. For this knowledge, the psalmist cried in prayer. He said, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Whenever trouble is getting knocking at your door, your prayer should be, O oh God, be not far from me. Psalm 22 verse 11. O oh God, be not far from me. Because you only need God to be with you in trouble for you to be able to smile at your trouble. So this promise of the Lord guarantee him as our companion in trouble. God Almighty himself says, I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. I want you to put down this scripture. Psalm number 23 verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Why must he not fear evil? The Lord was with him in trouble. If the Lord is with you, you have no need to fear evil. In verse uh, Isaiah 41 verse 10, say, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When God is with you in trouble, there is nothing for you to fear. He will strengthen you to overcome the trouble. And look at Isaiah 43 verse number 1 to 2. He said, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, thou they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle against thee. That is the promise that I will be with you in trouble. That no matter the situation, whether it is water problem, it is fire problem, it is whatever kind of problem you don't even know or imagine, the promises of the Lord cover you. If he is there, the strength and the power of such trouble we lose control over you. The good example here is the three Hebrew boys. They were thrown into the fiery furnace and the Lord was with them as he promised in the fire. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 24 and 25, you see the Lord there in the midst of the fire with them. Say the Lord then, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astoned and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answer and said unto him, unto the king, True, O king. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fort is like the Son of God. That's the fulfillment of his promise. Okay? It was done in a very visible way. To the Nebuchadnezzar the king, and he saw it that in the midst of the burning uh, uh, fairy furnace, God was there with his people. And there was no hurt because God was there. The power of the fire lose control over them because God was there. So I want to tell you in whatever situation you may be passing through, as long as God is there, this problem. The power of the problem, the power of the trouble will lose control. Remember, he has promised, I will be with you in trouble. Amen. So shall it be. You will enjoy God in all troubles of life because it will be there for you in Jesus' name. And the fifth one is, I will honor him. Wow, the Lord will honor you. May the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will honor him. In Hebrew, honor means Cabed, I will cabed him. The Lord will cabed you. Means the Lord will honor you. The Lord will honor such that love him, such that know him, and such that trust him. The word cabed means to give a person honor or to make them heavy. To make them heavy in the sense of being powerful. 
When the Lord says, I will cabbage you, it means I will honor you and I will make you powerful in every situation and everything that you are doing. God will make you powerful, stronger than your situation. God will make you you no know, honored in all things that you have laid your hand upon. God honors us by calling us his son and his daughter. It's a great honor. For a great God to call us son and sons and daughter is a great honor. He honors us by answering when we call on him, when we cry to him in prayer. It's a honor that you cry, you call. Somebody answer you in the time of trouble. It's a great honor. Okay? God honor us by recognizing us individually with our problems, our situations. In our you know, that Sammy say, I was poor, the Lord thinked about me. It's a honor. And remember, Jesus Christ said that I know my sheep, He know us by name. No, He said in Isaiah, I call you by name, you are mine. It's a honor. And God honor us by preparing a place for us to be with Him eternally. It's a great honor. Look at what John chapter 12, verse 26 says. He says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serve me, him, my father, will honor. Honor with what? Where I am, there my servant who follow me will be. So eternal promise for those who follow him. What a great honor. No, it's a great honor that God has promised you and I that where he is, we are uh, 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 where he is, he wants us also to be there. Somebody sang a song. It is a grace to live, a grace to live, man to live this world and follow Christ and to make a friend with the Lord Jesus. It is a grace to live, grace to It's a great honor. Only those who honor God Will God bestow this great honor on? I want you to realize God told uh, uh, Eli in First Samuel, Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. He said, therefore, the God, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me for those who honor me, I will honor. Hey, those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, I will despise. May the Lord not despise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you want the Lord to honor you continually. I want to plead of you. Remain with him. He will honor you. As long as you continue to serve the Lord, he will honor you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God stand as your permanent champions in the times of uh, uh, of, of life trouble. May the Lord stand as your permanent companion in the time of life trouble in the name of Jesus. May you not be dis destitute of help in life in the name of Jesus. May you enjoy consistent honor in life. May you also enjoy consistent honor in ministry, business, and career in the name of Jesus. May you make it to eternal kingdom within where you will enjoy eternal honor in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So shall it be for you. So shall it be for your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for listening. I remain your spiritual comrade, pastor, engineer, Tunde Ojo, till I come your way tomorrow. Keep growing the Lord and stay grounded in the word of his grace. I want to say again, God bless you. God bless your family.